Hey everyone, it's Michelle. Today's video I'll be sharing with you all my spring skincare empties. If you watched my low buy guide video back in March, I talked about how I'm doing a low buy year and one of the ways I'll be holding myself accountable is by doing a seasonal check-in as well as sharing skincare empties with you all. So I decided to separate the empties and low buy update video just because I found the video to be rather long and I just wanted to do a nice casual video talking about some skincare products I've gone through and save a more structured video with the low buy update in another video. So having said that, let's get on to the empty. So the first one is the Anua Heartleaf Acne Facial Cleanser. I talked about this in my end of year skincare favorites of 2021. It's a foaming cleanser with a low pH and I loved how it softened my skin I noticed a difference in my complexion right after using it the first time. My skin just looked really nicely refined. This was before I started the CO2 Fraxel laser that I had this in my collection. This helped keep some mild breakouts at bay. It has some salicylic acid as well as Hotonier Cordata. That is an ingredient in traditional Korean medicine that was commonly used to treat acne, but that with the combination of the 0.5% or so of salicylic acid in here, I found was just really good at keeping pores decongested. I actually have a couple of other salicylic acid products in this skincare empties video. So we got the Anua Heartleaf Cleanser. I have the SkinCeuticals Blemish Plus Age Defense Serum, which was, I believe, around 2% salicylic acid maybe less i'm not sure but this has salicylic acid in here as one of the main actives even though this is the spray bottle of the paula's choice acne spray what's in here is the bonajour eggplant daily bha toner which is 0.48 percent salicylic acid i really like salicylic acid in my skincare routine just because it keeps some mild decongestion at bay especially now during the summer months where it's a lot warmer. I've also been working out a lot more, so I really need something for my chest and back to keep the congestion around there at bay. The SkinCeuticals Blemish Plus Age Defense Serum, I hate to say that I really like this, so I got this in PR sometime last year, this and the Floritin Plus CF Serum, which I also really liked. I loved how this one just immediately made my complexion look really good. It definitely helped reduce inflammation around breakouts. For me personally, it wasn't enough for the cystic acne. Something like that, I had to go in with my prescription strength Dapsone or the Malaysia 2.5% benzyl peroxide acne gel. So to repeat, once again, salicylic acid is just for my skin really good at keeping congestion at bay more for preventative measures for blackheads whiteheads especially on my body i don't plan on purchasing the full size of this i think the 15 mils of the blemish plus age defense serum and the floritin cf serum was enough to give a good taste of what skin SkinCeuticals is about i have to say i am rather impressed i love the cosmetic elegance of both formulas. This one had a very strong smell of denatured alcohol. I found it worked well for my drier skin type, especially if I layered with a lot of moisturizing products. But I did notice in the winter time, this was a bit too drying for my skin. Nonetheless, I thought it was pretty good, made my complexion look really nice but there are more affordable alternatives that I am looking at to pick up and I'll mention that in a second. So I just want to quickly touch upon the empty that I decanted in this bottle, the Bonajour Eggplant Daily BHA Toner at 0.48% salicylic acid. It was okay. It's a very thin texture, very suitable for oilier skin types, but when it comes to the decongestion on my body, especially now that it's hotter, I am working out more consistently again, I do need to use a higher percentage, around 2%, because when I was using this, and I use it consistently every day on my chest, on my back, I still got really bad cystic breakouts on my back. They were so big and so painful. I could even feel them when I was lying down on my back in bed. That's how painful it got. And the Bonajour Eggplant BHA toner wasn't enough to prevent it from getting worse. I just found this wasn't really doing much for my body. For the Paula's Choice Acne Body Spray in general, this is actually the third bottle I picked up from them. I really like it, but I am thinking of actually picking up 
the Geek and Gorgeous BHA plus PHA toner. So I've really come to like PHA, which is a type of chemical exfoliant. It's a lot gentler than AHA. I have used PHA in mostly moisturizers, namely this empty right here, which is the Phytosurgeons Verdant Force Field Restorative Moisturizer. I really noticed the PHA at work. It just made my skin look really nice and smooth. It felt really nicely moisturized. This is one of the few moisturizers I really liked using in the summer months that sufficiently moisturized my skin. Granted, I needed to use a couple of pumps of this to feel satisfyingly moisturized, but still it made my skin look really nice and glowy, really smooth mochi like so given my experience with pha in this moisturizer i also tried a neostrata moisturizer with pha that was really good as well i figured since i need a new salicylic acid based product for my body i'll pick up the geek and gorgeous bha plus pha toner so that way i can occasionally use it on my face as well especially in the summer months because i did read that both bha and pha do not make your skin more photosensitive to the sun so i figured i need an active to apply on my body on my back and occasionally my face to keep congestion at bay the bha plus pha toner sounds like a good candidate for my skincare collection all right so that's one cleanser one toner and one serum with salicylic acid and one moisturizer with polyhydroxic acid moving on to another toner also by bonajour that's the green tea water bomb toner i also mentioned this in my end of year skincare favorites because i really liked the simplicity of this toner lovely viscous texture it's just what you need if you just want a simple hydrating toner that won't compromise your skin you want to add in those hydrating layers but having said that i've now moved on from the very simple type of products i still have the Cioris my first essener in my skincare collection right now it's on rotation in my skincare routine what i like about that in particular is i noticed the calming soothing benefits from that toner really lovely jelly texture as well antioxidant it's a way darker color so higher in concentration of green tea for antioxidant purposes i feel like i'm reaping the benefits of green tea more with that toner than with this one but this is still a really good option for those of you that are just looking for a really nice viscous hydrating toner you just want it to be simple no fuss and you don't really want it to have a lot of bells and whistles to it while we're still around the topic of maintaining skin's clarity and preventing any decongestion another empty i have is my prescription axone which is five percent dapsone i use this mainly for my active inflamed acne on my face and i don't think i'll be picking up another one of these tubes just because I find that my skin has been really good at maintaining clarity with just my prescription strength tretinoin when I use it a few times a week. I still have the Malaysia 2.5% benzyl peroxide gel as well. So I've just been using it as a spot treatment on the occasion I do get a breakout and that's been working fine for my skincare routine. It hasn't caused any irritation. I actually used that gel on my back as well when the eggplant toner from bonajour was just not cutting it and it really helped to lower the size inflammation and red color from the cysts that i had on my back i should probably do a video on back knee and just body congestion in general and how i maintain it because i think i have a pretty solid body care routine in that regard except for when i was using that toner but anyways back to the axone i won't be picking this up again just because i find my acne has been really well controlled and if I do get the occasional spot, I have something in my collection that will help me with it, especially with the tretinoin still in my skincare routine. Actually, I have been thinking about getting prescription strength azelaic acid again, not the 10% that you can get over the counter, but the 15% like Phenacea or Skinnerin, something like that, just because I found it was really good at controlling my acne, but keeping my skin really nice and bright. So I've been debating about requesting that for a while from a dermatologist i probably will eventually but again i just kind of want to go through my skincare and figure out 
what I can use in the meantime until I decide to pick that up. Speaking of brightening, I emptied a Geek and Gorgeous 101 C Glow Serum. This is a very affordable vitamin C serum. I did a full review on this as well as the Jelly Joker Cleanser and the toner if you want to check that out. I'll leave it up in the cards or description box down below. I also emptied out a bottle of the Neod Survival Zero, which is an antioxidant serum. So the idea was after I finished the Regimen Lab Vitamin X Serum, which is a multi-antioxidant serum, that I would use the Geek and Gorgeous Sea Glow alongside Neod Survival Zero. From what I recall, I believe that one bottle of the Sea Glow Serum and Neod Survival Zero was more cost effective than one 30 ml serum of the Regimen Lab Vitamin X Serum. And another thing, the Vitamin X Serum, I did not refrigerate it at all. It was recommended not to buy the brand. And because of that, it did eventually oxidize because it does have a significant amount of vitamin C in the formula. It almost felt hydrating as well. And actually one of the viewers here in the comment section of my Regimen Lab review video said they actually put the vitamin X serum in the fridge and there were no problems with the consistency. So my thoughts right now is that because I have another one of the Neot Survival Zero serum that I'm going through, I'm going to pick up the Geek and Gorgeous 101 Sea Glow Serum one more time to use together, especially during these summer months when I really want to up the antioxidant protection. Once I'm done those two serums again, I will pick up the Regimen Lab Vitamin X Serum because I do really enjoy the texture of that serum and for the most part when it was stable, it performed pretty well in my skincare routine. And now that I know that while refrigerating it, there's no problem. I definitely want to try to pick it up again. So aside from that, when it comes to these two serums, this is my third empty of the C Glow Serum. It's just a really nice affordable vitamin C serum that checks all the bells and whistles for an L ascorbic acid serum. And the Neod Survival Zero Serum was very well tolerated when I was healing from the CO2 Fraxel laser sessions. Something like an L ascorbic acid serum with a low pH was just way too irritating for my skin at the time. So the Neod Survival Zero Serum took its place at that time I was going through the CO2 Fraxel laser session and my skin was constantly having to heal from those procedures. Like I said, I have another bottle open of the Neod Survival Zero Serum and because it's summertime, I want to up the antioxidant protection. I'm probably going to pick up another bottle of the Geek and Gorgeous Sea Glow Serum. I have some more serums here. This one is from Regimen Lab. It is their Wave Serum. I believe they reformulated it recently, so this is the older version of it. I picked this up in 2021. This is a very lovely hydrating serum. Typically, I don't go out of my way to purchase a hydrating serum. I usually like using a serum with a thick gel texture, so I never really find a hydrating serum in my skincare routine necessary. But the reason I picked up this serum in the first place is because it has 5% urea and 5% hydroxyethyl urea. This was really lovely in my skincare routine, especially during the winter months when I felt like my skin really needed to amp up the moisture and I wanted something more emollient. I ended up incorporating this in my skincare routine. I also used it in the summertime, experienced no congestion. It actually made my skin texture look really nice and smooth. My pores looked smaller, more refined because my skin was just holding on to moisture that much better and it just again made my overall complexion look really nice. I actually found the Malaysia 5% Urea Moisturizer. So I'm using that right now and it's pretty suitable for this time of year, but I am debating between picking that up or the new Wave Serum to try out. We'll see how I feel once I empty out the Malaysia Moisturizer and the colder months start coming around. All right, this one is not a complete empty. It is the Hylamide Sub-QI's Advanced Serum. So the reason I did not finish this is that I dropped this and I thought everything was fine, but I broke the dropper. So there are little glass shards at the end of this serum, so can't use it anymore. At least it was at the end. I was seriously considering picking this up again, and then I heard that DCM is no longer going to be selling Hylamide. Right now I'm using the Cosrx 
snail peptide eye moisturizer. That one's okay. I plan on doing a review of some Cosrx snail products I've tried, but I have to say between that eye product and this one, I definitely preferred this one more. So slightly sad this one is being discontinued, but I'm sure I'll find something else eventually. Last serum that I emptied is the Magno Bifida Biome Complex Ampule. So if you recall last year, I was really enjoying the Rovectin Clean Biome Ampule, which had bifida ferment lysate in the formula. That's the first time I ever tried a serum with a fermented lysate. I'm usually used to the fermented filtrates from an essence. Basically, once I started using a serum with fermented lysate in the formula, particularly bifida ferment lysate, I just noticed my skin's overall quality was so much better. My skin felt stronger. It looked more even in tone, not as compromised if I were to, you know, eat a lot of carbs and start breaking out. I felt like my skin did not feel as sensitive. And with the Manual Bifida Biome Complex Ampule, I feel like it continued the same benefits that the Rovectin one did. Now that I finished this, I am using the Yun Jack Whole Plant Effect Concentrate Serum. It's like a modern Hanbang inspired serum. Odile Monad. Love her channel. She talked about that in one of her videos. So far, so good, but I have to say I do miss that thick gel texture that the Rovectin Biome Ampule had. So I'm thinking either going back to that or the Misha Time Revolution Night Ampule. Jude from 50 Shades of Snail really loves that serum. Also has a thick gel texture a high concentration of the bifida ferment lysate. So I've been thinking about going towards that one instead of the Rovectin one. I'm probably going to read some more reviews on it before I commit to purchasing it and, you know, finishing the other serum that I have until I purchase that as well. That is it for my serum empties. And now onto the last category of empties, that is moisturizer. So the first moisturizer empty is the Dr. G Red Blemish clear soothing cream reached for this a lot after my second and third co2 frexel laser session it did a very good job at just soothing my skin cooling it lowering inflammation even when i experienced breakouts i found myself reaching for this to soothe my skin this and the cosrx snail cream i already emptied that one but basically the cosrx snail cream and this i rotated when I had some breakouts and I just needed something to soothe my skin. Out of the two, however, I would repurchase the Dr. G Red Blemish Clear Soothing Cream just because I find that when it comes to Centella Asiatica, time and time again, it's proven to be really good at reducing inflammation and just really good wound healing in my experience. I'm sure if I tried snail-based products more over time, I may see the benefits, but I do find that Centella Asiatica-based skincare products have been far more successful, and I just really love the texture of this product. I'm actually thinking about picking up the cream as well as the serum in the same line when I get the occasional acne breakout and I want to use something soothing alongside the active in my skincare routine such as the benzoyl peroxide gel and tretinoin next moisturizer empty it's the aven cold cream so if you have very dry skin like mine you liked the bioderma autoderm intensive balm i think you would like this because it has that greasy consistency, and I know this sounds unappealing to some of you, but if you have really dry skin, especially in the winter months, it's kind of the texture that you love to apply on your skin, and it makes your skin really nice and glowy, comfortably moisturized. However, there are a couple of cons with this cream in particular. One, it's the fragrance. It's a little bit strong, and it's just not pleasant for me when I'm applying this cream. The second con about the Aven Cold Cream is that it stung my eye area every single time I applied it. That in combination with the unpleasant fragrance, I ended up downgrading this to a body cream. Otherwise, if you're okay with the fragrance and your eye area is not that sensitive like mine, I think you would really like this on your face and neck. Again, it just has that really nice greasy moisturizer feel something that i personally really like in the winter months so if that sounds like it's up your alley maybe you would want to give this a try 
For me, I won't be repurchasing because again, those two cons, the fragrance and it burning my eye area. Last empty is the Bioderma Sika Bio Pomade. I already repurchased this if you saw my first and only haul video of 2022. Again, very good during my post CO2 Fraxel laser care. It's just really good at providing a really nice moisturizing finish on my skin. With the Sika, I found it also really nice and soothing. I visibly see my skin evening out in complexion, the redness just reducing. For the longest time, I was using the La Roche-Posay Sika Plast Balm because I found it did a really good job at soothing my skin as well. And I also used it in my skincare when I was going through the healing time for the CO2 Fraxel laser. But there are also a couple of cons that I have with that balm. One, sometimes I found it did sting my skin on occasion. Thankfully, during the CO2 Fraxel laser healing time, it was not stinging my skin. The second con is that there is clearly a cast coming from that balm because of the zinc in the formula. And I put up with it because I only used it at night and I still found it a pretty good soothing product. But now that I've been using the Bioderma Sika Bio Pomade and I have a second tube of it, I prefer it so much more than the La Roche-Posay one. So I'm going to be sticking to this one from now on. All right, and that is it for my spring skincare empties of 2022. As always, I hope you find videos like this helpful and informative. If you did, please be sure to give the video a like. Subscribe to my channel down below for future videos, including my low buy update video. That's going to be coming shortly after this one. Please leave any comments down below if you have experience with the products I mentioned, or if you want to recommend something that you really like that you think I would like as well, I would love to hear about it. Actually, the Bioderma Sika Bio Pomade was recommended to me by an Instagram follower. Absolutely in love. And again, I repurchase it. so. If you have any recommendations for something that you think I may like, please drop it in the comments down below. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all soon. Ciao.